Hey everyone, I'm Devin. I'm Dustin. And we play Dungeons and Dragons. Welcome to D4. Uh, today we're starting with Session Zero Part 1. Yep, and uh, it's going to be a little bit of an intro into how our party got to Waterdeep, and we'll hopefully answer a few questions about yep. why yep. they're here. May answer a few questions you have so far. Yeah, and get you to learn a little bit more about their characters. And where they came from. And we start Session Zero Part 1 with only one player. Yes. Let's go ahead and dive in, shall we? Yes. Voss, three years ago, you washed up on a sandy shore, lungs full of seawater, skin burned, body sitting at the brink of death. Your first thought was that you had died, now washed ashore of the river Styx, ready to await judgment for your sins. However, when you awoke, you saw before you an old man, wrinkled features, warm smile, and eyes that shine with wisdom beyond his years. You have come to know him well, and his name is Gregory Vallisbond. He never had a father figure, raised as an orphan, became a person on a ship. But if you ever did have a father figure, you would have wished it to be a man of this caliber. His wisdom shined brightest through his kindness and his ability to see the silver lining through even the darkest storms raging inside of you and everyone around you. You may not call him father, but you do honor him as a friend, because together he and a blind man well into his years named Kenji mended your wounds and cared for you and slowly nurtured you back to health. You found yourself in the ruined temples of Agma, an old library and temple once outfitted to be a medical ward for whatever happened. This temple is located on the northern coast, the Sword Coast, the northern coast of the Sword Coast, where you wash the shore. Unsure exactly of where you are. Walking again took time. Mm. Learning to fight and move like you once did took even longer. But you had help. And if not for them in each of their ways, you may never have walked again. Over the three years, you and Gregory's daughter, Seisha, grew very close as she helped you with your lessons with Bellisand Lengor. The man you understood most was an old paladin whose cold, calculated, and stoic demeanor echoed that of the one he worshipped as one who keeps records of the dead and the knowledge of their life from beginning to end. He who lost the ability to walk retrained you how to use your body once again. Bellisant Langor, what is the name of the uh, deity he worships? Jurgal. Gotcha. Showing you no mercy to push you past your limitations to open new ways to do things that you didn't think to do before. He had the help of Kenji. A man, although older and blind, could move like the wind and seemed to know your moves even before you attempted them. And he also did the same by pushing your body's limits. And he did this as he spent time teaching you to not rely as much on your broken body or your sight, but instead on how to harness and use your other senses to outthink your opponents. For three years, you spent your days here with the only four inhabitants of the temple. Quick question. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything in Kenji's movements that I would recognize from my past? No. No. Okay. Yeah, definitely well-trained. Um, focuses more on hand-to-hand -hand combat. Mm -hmm. Um, but uses his walking staff incredibly effectively, especially mm. for a blind man. Yes. Gotcha. But nothing that stands out from... Yeah, from at first you even from. questioned if he was blind. Um, you found solace in some old books, the hard work from farming the lands for your own food, 
and the camaraderie you found in Seisha, even if it was guarded and how open you were to her. Once you realized you were back to your old talents, you <clears throat> knew Seisha was talking about heading out to the world to find the knowledge Agma pushed her to find. She was heading to Waterdeep, a place you knew well, a place to find a new purpose. You and Seisha had planned to set out to Neverwinter and find a ship to take you south to Waterdeep in the next couple of days. But the night before you were to set out, Gregory found you and pulled you aside and sat you down. And with warm eyes and a smile that you've come to know and welcome, he says, I am so proud to see how much progress you have made these past three years. I imagine you are back to, if not better, than you were before you washed up onto our shores all those years ago. Hopefully better, sir. I want to say again, thank you for taking the time and uh, going out of your way when you know you didn't have to. It's an odd thing to see. It is all right. And he kind of lays his hand on your shoulder and smiles warmly towards you. You now head back home to live each day better than the last. Voss, my child, I know you still walk with a heavy burden. But I will leave you with this advice that I know all too well. Secrets can consume you. He pats you on the shoulder and removes his hand. Mm -hmm. Look after my daughter, as I know she will do the same for you. Fear not the man you were, because the man you are today will forge who you are tomorrow. I hope that's true. Thank you. And, um, for what it's worth, I'll make sure she finds whatever she is she's looking for. You should get down. You should be heading out soon. All right. Get some rest. All right. You'll always have a home here. May I ask a question? Of course. Why water deep? Why does she feel compelled to go there? Akma guides her to find knowledge. And water deep houses what is called the City of Splendors for a reason. I believe she read stories of a a library to a scribe of Akma that is rumored to be there, but why her heart guides her there, I cannot say. Perhaps you should ask her. I may have to. I won't lie. Waterdeep houses more than knowledge. Some things best left forgotten. City of Splendor is not what I'd call it, but I understand. Um, I'll do my best, sir. I know you will, and even knowledge to be forgotten is knowledge to be found. Even the most treacherous things once known can teach you how not to do them again. As I said, secrets can consume you. And that I should be amazing then. I'll head out. Get some rest. I'm sure she will want to leave at dawn's first light. She was always the early riser with the sun. That Irritating. I'm proud of you. Again, he just lays his hand and just kind of squeezes your shoulder. Thank you. Just 
smiles and watches you guys. I, there's a compelled to hug him back, but I don't. With that, we will bring the rest of Session Zero's players to the table. We begin with Seisha and Voss. The two of you have set off south on your way to Neverwinter. Seisha, you leave behind your home, the only place you've ever known. The sanctuary of books and a library so well versed you could recite them all from memory. You studied all that lies beyond the ruined temple for miles, the rock strewn sandy shoreline where you learned to swim and where Gregory, your father, found Voss all the way to the sea of grasslands that stretched farther than you could see, and definitely farther than you could explore. You know now that you must set out in the world and gain the knowledge that Agma has set upon you. The warm summer breeze coming off the coast greets you with excitement of new beginnings as it blows into the open window of your bedchamber. You're fastening the straps to your armor. Your hands run over the myriad of dents, scrapes, and chinks, rehammered and retooled, no telling how many countless times. The kinks in the chainmail were even mended, closed by your hand. Uh, the pauldrons and breastplates sit awkwardly as they are forged for a man slightly shorter and much broader in the chest than you. But you smile wide as you tighten the final strap. Looking at yourself in the mirror, you have many times before donning the armor given to you by Belsund, your mentor. You shake your head as you remember the day he stubbornly gave it to you when you found it hidden underneath his bed. You pick up the shield, which once bore the, uh, the image of a skull over a scroll, the holy symbol of Jergal. You have since then stripped away the skull to only reveal the scroll. A bit more of Agma's symbol. A serene and sanguine look washes over your eager face as you strap the shield to your back and head to meet Voss in the front courtyard of the temple. Uh, I'd like to try this. Okay. Um, I would like to attempt to hide. Okay. To see <laughs> All right. if I can catch her unaware. Okay, make a stealth check. That's good. Um... 22. That's really good. <laughs> uh, where are you hiding? Um, I want to hide right by the entryway, like off to the side, just out of her sight. Okay. So as soon as she walks in, so I can as to, like, the door opens, you're on the, uh, Got it. the hidden okay. side. Yeah. 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 Totally comes out, enters into the courtyard, um, your old training yard, and doesn't seem to notice you as she moves in, kind of looking around. Okay, I guess I'm first then. Uh, you do see Gregory, Belson, and Master Kenji waiting for you to bid you farewell before you head south along the Blackford Road to Neverwinter. Okay. Gonna cross over to them and... As soon as she does, I cross behind her and tap her lightly on the shoulder like once. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you? Always in the shadow. <laughs> That's a little disconcerting. <laughs> I'll be your shadow on this journey, so it's a little useful, I'd like to think. I, I would appreciate it. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Are you? A little bit, yeah. I've, I've never left here. As you walk up, you see Kenji kind of smile in your direction. As you are learning well. Thanks. Not as good as a blind man, though. I didn't see you. <laughs> Bell, Bell Sun does the exact same thing. Uh, again. Uh, ah, I'm so tired of your humor, old man. Oh, what is life without humor? As you both approach, they each impart their own wisdom. Words you've heard a thousand times before and will continue to carry with you far from home. The journey to Neverwinter is roughly 60 miles away and will take you about two and a half days to walk there since you have no horses at the temple. 
Belsund looks to each of you and kind of just gives you a scoff of, but a respectful nod. About the best thing that you'll get from him. I go up and give him a hug, even though I know he'll hate it. He makes this just this, oh, yeah, 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 I got it, I got it, just go. You see a stick kind of take his hand and guide it around you. And, and he just, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you're, you're gonna be fine, kid. You're gonna be great. I'm going to miss you. I'm not gonna miss you. Yes, you will. He says you can kind of see like the corner of his mouth kind of trying. He's trying not to smile and, and kind of get, and he just kind of, he seems kind of. <laughs> you, you're inside to grow this every day. I've had very good teachers. Knowledge of the world. It's what we've bestowed upon you. Now you must gather your own. You must gather your own path. Hmm. You'll find ailments in your bones. That's just age. Wisdom. Right. Well, you're done hugging and making a scene. We have places to be. One more. <laughs> Goodbye, Father. He embraces you in a, a long hug. And he kind of just whispers in your ear. Gain the knowledge that the world has to give. Okay. I will see you soon. There is a tear He smiles and, and he nods to you, look of understanding, and then Belsund again. All right, get out of here already. I got things to do. As he wheels away. Um, Gregory does not approach you to hug. He just gives you a simple nod. You know, this is an acknowledgement of the words you would exchange before. Well, shall we? I think we shall. I uh, allow her to take the pace. The journey to Neverwinter is roughly 60 miles away and will take two and a half days to walk. Since, since you have no horses at the temple. The Blackford Road, road, not road, Blackford Road, is well traveled and you hope to not encounter too much trouble on the way down. Can I keep an active watch out for anything that's going on? Absolutely. Perception. Sure. Go ahead and do a perception check. It's not bad either. 19. Okay. The first day, pretty uneventful. A couple passerbys here and there, a couple horse and carts, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, you step off to the side as the carts go by to give them the right away, um, and it's a nice, warm day as it is the beginning of summer. This far north hasn't quite gotten rid of the chill that is always there. There is a cool breeze that blows off the coast, but you make camp after the first day and you find a well enough spot just off the road it looks to be a well-used campsite there's already a fire pit dug and you make your way the first night away from home and it was during that first night that the wind kicked up in the moon lit night that ended with a small scare of a wolf but you both managed to scare it off before being eaten yeah. <laughs> Nothing else happened on the first night. A quarter of the way into the second day, however, he found a merchant cart. Simple design with an old canvas canopy and a single mule that ushered it along heading to Neverwinter. And with a few small trades of some books, you were able to negotiate a ride the rest of the way. 
Are we riding in the back of this car? You would, yep. What do I see then? Just various goods here and there. Nothing fancy, just normal, you know, stockade of like grain and uh, like there's like a couple barrels of oil and things like that. Gotcha. Rope, coils of ropes, you know, your standard goods. Standard, standard Anything that would be useful. Nothing that you don't have on you already. The day goes on. He shares you with his food. You guys tell stories. Ask him about who you are, where you come from. Um, but then you come upon the outskirts of Neverwood. Once known as the Jewel of the North, the city of Neverwood. Ne- Never winter was never winter. Never winter. Yeah. Never world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, is, this isn't what I was expecting. Oh, <laughs> oh I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> well, the city of Neverwinter was badly damaged when nearby Mount Hotenau erupted about 50 or so years ago. Now the city of Skilled Hands, as it is known, works furiously to rebuild itself. Neverwinter's reconstruction is far from complete, however. Some of its outer walls still lie in ruins, and several of its neighbors neighborhood uh, remains abandoned. Even so, the great chasm to the open uh, underdark that opened within the city has been magically sealed, but it was at great expense. And that achievement bodes well for ne- Neverwinter's future. You enter through the north gate into the Black Lake District. You meet resistance at the gates. That is, until after explaining who you are, where you're headed towards, but more so once they see that symbol on your shield is the devout symbol of Agra, they ease up and let you pass, giving you direction to the Dock District, which is southwest. But what's curious, they were very curious as to why you weren't there um, and did not want directions to the House of Knowledge. What do you do when you hear this? I am looking for knowledge in more than just books and tomes. I'm searching for it in life itself. And I'm currently seeking to learn through experience. Do I get any kind of a suspicious reading from any of these people who are asking questions? Make an insight check. I will. That's a card. Okay. That's, is that correct? Can you see the main number on top? I can see the main number on top. Okay. That's 17. 17. They seem fine. They're more curious about newcomers they don't recognize or uh, just the kind of question everybody that comes through, especially the disheveled gates. I just stay quiet. Um, They will tell you, if you wish to see it on your way out, you can pass by. I, I would very much like to. They give me directions. Thank you. As you slightly detour to head towards the House of Knowledge, it is now only an empty shell of new stone being built aloft old scorched rock of the stone that stood here before. It was all but destroyed during the eruption of Mount Cook now, and is being rebuilt. You learn from talking to the few priests of Agma that are there that sadly most of the books and scrolls were lost in this destruction. The sight brings pain to your heart, knowing so much knowledge was lost in the world, never to be read again. Do I still have some books on me? Yeah, I imagine you would have brought a good... I, I would like to make a contribution to rebuilding your stores of knowledge, and I'll hand them a few books. They are gracious and... Thank you. And as you... As you send... As you give these books, you say a prayer to Agma, hoping that there are copied manuscripts of the works that resided here somewhere in the world. But, I hope that this will at least help begin to rebuild. And you see warmth to their faces, knowing that there are still purveyors of knowledge out there. As you make your way through the city streets, boss, you notice the awestruck visage that takes hold of Seisha. It takes you back, concerned something has befallen her into a bewilderment. But then you smile, realizing she is a simple girl whose world is opening up before her. Seisha, 
they are overtaken by the amount of new information that swells within you. You've lived your entire life locked to one place, one lifestyle, one building, and only now four, four other people. You're surrounded by architecture of all types, people of all walks of life, new races, different cultures, different teachings that you could learn, different stories. You love your home and your family, but for the first time you truly feel like you're on the true path for Atma. If this was the jewel of the North, what awaits you at the City of Splendors? I'm going to regularly grab Voss by the arm and drag him over to things. Oh, look at this! And drag him all over the city, basically. And Neverwinter <laughs> is, is a, a city. It is being rebuilt, but you can see that. Is your strength real quick? Uh, 14. You can do that easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Neverwinter, it, one of the things it prides itself on is its clock towers. Mm -hmm. It is, and it is a gorgeous city underneath the ruined rubble of that which was burned and destroyed. But they are rebuilding. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, if you want, go ahead and make me a history check. Six. <laughs> yep. yep. You're new sight, new sounds. <laughs> you just interrupt. Just so overwhelmed. Yep. You can make me a history check on this one as well. Sure. Uh, this might be slightly better. Ten? Nope. Yep. That sounds good. <laughs> all right. I'm less depressed about that. No, no, no. no. <laughs> no it's, all, it's all good. But no, it, again, you, you're not quite sure what, what's up. Um, uh, you made your way west, where Cobble Street becomes more dirt and refuse. The stench of the fresh refuse cooking in the day sun nearly makes you gag, Seisha. But when you look over to Voss, you see his stoic reserve self unfazed as if he is just if he is just at home here as he is anywhere else. That doesn't bother you? That's the smell of the city. Every city smells like shit. Oh. Right. Well, there's my something new for the day. You walk past a plethora of open market kiosk shop types, most cutting and selling the gutted and cured carcasses of sea creatures, down to the dirt driftwood tavern, looking for a ship heading to Neverwinter. Boss, go ahead and make me an investigation check with advantage. <laughs> Eleven. It takes a little while as you start asking around and really just kind of looking to, to see the right person to talk to. Also, every time you think you make a lead, you look around and Seisha's off wandering and talking to someone new. Uh, just, just oh, what's random. this? I, I'm going to attempt to sneak on her again. Okay, I'm going to make a sneak on her that's a one. Oh. <laughs> you you actually you go to creep up and kind of scare right as a barmaid comes around the corner at the exact same time, and you actually you catch yourself, but there's a whoa as she kind of goes and kind of pulls the drink of trays up. Doesn't go all over you, but there's mm -hmm. definitely a bit of a ruckus that, that causes Shasha to turn around at the very last second. See, that's what happens when you don't pay attention. I am paying attention, just to everything else. Fair enough. <laughs> temper your enthusiasm a little bit. I know this is new, but we're moving to dangerous waters, so to speak. I understand. I'll try. I understand, though. It's new things everywhere. It's... I've... Yeah. I've only ever read about this stuff, and to actually see it, it's... It's greater than anything I imagined. It's it's incredible. This? Yes. Dwarf? All the people, all the the yelling, the smells, the noises. It's 
It's like pure chaos, but in this beautiful dance. It's incredible. All right. <laughs> well. You must think I'm simple. A little. Uh, <laughs> I think you have a lot to experience. And uh, I hope it's a good one. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, if I can finish tripping over myself and perhaps find us a proper ship and get moving forward. And you do eventually come across a female half-elf who happens to be the quartermaster of a ship. Her name is Leah Smoother, and she is the quartermaster of the ship Timora's Blessing, which is heading to Waterdeep to pick up supplies before heading out to the Moonshay Isles. Do I recognize any of those? Make a history check. That's better. Uh, Seisha, you would like to make a religion check as well. Fourteen. You haven't heard of the ship Timor's Blessing, but you... Well, two, technically, but... <laughs> Pretty name. Yep, no. Oh, that's um, nice. Uh, sorry, you haven't heard of her before, but you have heard of the, ti- of the ship Timor's Blessing. Um, it's a merchant vessel, um, but it's it's known by its name as to be one of the luckiest ships to mm. sail. Um, always seem to get out of storms un- unhinged or with minor repairs needed, so on and so forth. Uh, <clears throat> Seisha, you notice that in this conversation, you've always known Voss to be reserved to be stoic, to think twice before acting. This, his conversation with this woman seems to come naturally. He knows exactly what to say, when to say it, knows the exact words to get, Mm -hmm. uh, to easily push you guys to talk your way onto the ship. Lucky sails. I've heard good things about this one. Oh, well... Outstanding. That was very impressive. What? Just the way you you negotiated. Uh, thank sailors, you. no sailors. That's, that's and it impressive. is the luckiest ship in the sea. So I get it. Well, much appreciated. Thank you. Um, we will be leaving. Midday tomorrow. So, wherever you're staying, just make sure that you're on the docks. Uh, 312. Where's the closest in? Stand in there. As the barkeep kind of says behind the thing. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Um, a room for the night. Two cover. I've got it. I suggest the beef stew. It's lovely. All right, then. So, what are we going to do for the evening? Aside from sleep? Well, I mean, we've got a little time to kill. Um, or are we going to stay put have... so I don't get in trouble? <laughs> do you have any um, small libraries, anything like that close by? Uh, the barkeep kind of speaks up and says that unfortunately the house of knowledge was our library up until uh, recently when it was destroyed. You can always check and see if they got anything lying around. Is there any place where we might find a bard? Find a bard? Yes. Uh, bards are repositories of knowledge as well. They're the keeper of tales. And you spend the rest of your evening looking for bards and stories of Neverwinter. And we're going to shift our focus to Finley. Finley, you walk out of Neverwinter Academy holding your belongings and looking back with a sigh. Once again, you are proven right. Once again, you are disappointed, feeling alone. 
and unjustly forced within the confines of others' prejudice. Once again, you walk away from neglect and pitiful minds who do not understand, wondering if you'll ever find what you are looking for. But all is not lost. You have heard of a place where you may finally find acceptance for what you are. A city of knowledge, a city of intellect, a city of splendors. You give one final scoff to the imbeciles in the building behind you as you head towards the docks. You tighten the straps on your wrist sheets, making sure your wands are secure, and your book with the butterfly cover is safe on your hip. No one is going to control you, not again. You give a confident smile and make your way out of Beggar's Nest, where the academy was rebuilt, and head west to the docks to find a ship. The stone-paved road transitioned to chum-soaked dirt paths that weave through wooden buildings that empty into open city markets cluttered with people. You turn your nose up as you carefully traverse the streets, trying to avoid soling your robes and shoes. As you pass through Protector's Enclave and make your way into the Dock District, make a perception check. That's a wire. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, so it's just too bad. It's rolling, rolling. Great. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. This little thing just touched me. I have to, I have to clean it. <laughs> you look around, hopeful to find a ship to carry you to water deep. And you find nothing. And you kind of get discouraged. And you spend about two hours looking around until finally your eye spots a man with features that catch your eye. His cheekbones high, his chin pointy, long flowing brown hair and tanned but fair skin, wearing a loose fitting shirt and overcoat with pants tucked into folded boots. Your eyes go to the feature you were looking for. The ears, long and pointy, that rest against a feather brimmed tricorn. There is no mistaking it. He is high elf. You approach and learn that his name is Kenalopolis Gale, and he is the captain of a ship called Timora's Blessing. And you are in luck, for they are headed to Waterdeep. You're able to book passage on the ship, knowing that Mistra and Corellian Lorathian smiled down on you today as you await to board the High Elf Captain's ship. As you two <clears throat> already made your way to the ship, you stand watching the last bits of cargo being loaded. You watch, oh, no, uh, yeah. sorry. You, Vinley, sorry, stand watching uh, the last bits of cargo being loaded. You watch as two humans approach and then an obvious half-elf female who approaches Captain Gale and gives him a slap on the shore. She motions towards the two and hands him a bag of something heavy. The captain chuckles and then motions to you. She laughs and says, Timora shines her luck on us today, Captain. She then begins checking the manifest of the cargo. If everyone would like to describe your characters. All right. Um, I am uh, unusually tall looking humanoid human woman. Uh, I have coppery red hair and uh, it's it's pulled back very similar to mine is now a uh, little tendril sort of framing her face uh, she's about six foot four so she's a uh, very tall woman uh, wearing obviously well-worn armor uh, and carrying a shield that has a, uh, a a skull that appears to have been buffed out as best it could be with a scroll still visible. She has uh, very pale golden eyes and very, very uh, light skin. She, she moves with a thump. She's, she's not graceful by any means, but she's very muscular from what you can see. And her eyes are just darting everywhere. She's taking everything in. Um, 
for me, you see a rather average looking elven woman. Like, nothing immediately strikes you except for how sharp her features are. Because, you know, elves have really sharp features. But on her, she has almost gaunt looking cheekbones. And her hair is elegantly braided up into a, what you can assume a very fanciful style. And it has adornments made of gold all throughout it. And on her neck, she wears uh, golden jewelry. And on her ears, there are chains of gold. And you see a, a tome on her side with a very, very realistic looking butterfly on the cover. And she's just standing there looking at everyone with this very unapproving look in her bright green eyes. And her it's very contrasting with her black hair and very pale skin. Like, paler than normal mm -hmm. high elves. Mm -hmm. She doesn't go outside very much. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just standing there looking at you walk up. I, I should probably add that uh, Seisha is ethereally beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I am horribly normal compared to the rest of you. <laughs> um, very sailor-esque. Skin has clearly been kissed by the sun. Hair is short, black, eyes so dark brown they almost look black as well. Um, noticeably shorter than you, but about six feet, five, eleven, six feet tall. Um, clothing is plain. Uh, it was essentially what I got from the church that looks sailorish. Long overcoat, boots, pants, all of that looks secondhand. Um, gloves extend underneath the coat. Um, and both hands are gloved, like completely covered on that. The only thing that has any kind of obvious standout description is there is a deep scar at the bottom of my chin that runs down right here. Uh, it's very noticeable. That's it. And I will say, you would notice the clothing I'm wearing is very fine, and it covers almost every inch of my body to where you can see nothing else on my person except for the book. And I have very long, flowy sleeves. Oh. <laughs> As the three of you stand, waiting to board, smelling the salt of the sea in the air, watching the gulls circle the large masts of the old yet well-taken-care-of ship, a ship that has probably seen many things and could tell many stories, Voss, you find yourself subconsciously looking over the rigging, running your hands across the grain of the rails, you find yourself in a natural state of mind, at peace and content. She's good to go. Everything is in place. She'll get you where you need to go. Unfamiliar with the workings of a ship, the rest of you stand aimlessly unsure of what to do now that you are on board as the crew moves cargo and supplies into its hull. Tie down thick ropes to the banister and do countless other duties readying the ship for departure. I would like everybody to make perception checks. Ten. Seven. I rolled a two. Eighteen. <laughs> Eighteen. <laughs> I'm so glad uh, you're here. <laughs> you enamored with all of the commotion around <laughs> uh, trying to figure out yourself. You've read about ships, but you're trying to figure out, you're watching everybody, what are they doing? Oh, I remember seeing that. Um, that whatever's happening else around you, you're not really paying mind to. Vinley, more focused uh, internally about your days to come and being surrounded by a bunch of people that don't really fit your preferred... <laughs> Uh, preferred uh, clientele, if you might say, <laughs> save for the captain. Um, but however, Voss, you notice that a large group approaches the ship as the crowd parts, ushering in whatever compelling presence towards the vessel. There are several well-dressed individuals, as well as several obvious members of some monastery, but they are attired in their formal demeanor. Do I recognize it? You do not. 
They are escorted by two heavily armored individuals who stand next to an extremely tall, close to seven foot individual wearing many layered robes and a veil that covers their features entirely. They're headed towards the, the ship. ship. Yes. I would like to immediately tug on Sasha's arm and attempt to okay. um, join me over here real quick. <laughs> kind of trying to get us out of the path of whatever this okay. group is. Um, as he does that, you look around and you see why he is ushering you away. As you see other people start to part okay. as this uh, group makes their way towards the ship. This entity that is completely veiled seems to glide more than walk with the cadence of their steps, delicate and poised like a dancer gliding effortlessly, effortlessly over the creaking wooden dock. One of the well-dressed individuals walks up to the captain and speaks to him in hushed tones away from prying ears. You see the captain nod while waving a large group aboard the ship as they walk with purpose and disappearing below deck to whatever assigned quarters they may have. I don't know, but I prefer not to draw attention to ourselves. I think that's fair. That was odd. Uh, some sort of monastic order, I don't know which would be my guess. Was there any uh, indication on their persons of what their affiliation might be? No. Okay. Very simple colors, muted, nothing, okay. not, no pattern or anything like that. Okay. You said look monastic. Though. Yes, yes, definitely, look, right. definitely right. look monastic. Yeah, did not have any symbols of uh, religion, but you've been around a temple for the past three years. You've kind of picked up on the mannerisms of how they carry themselves. Gotcha. That's really what spoke to me. Gotcha. It is not much longer before the final bit of cargo is loaded and you are allowed to head below decks and are accompanied by crewmen to your quarters. The room is more of a barracks than individual rooms. Four dark wood bunk beds are tucked tightly into the single door. Light mildew odors the room. This is your home for the next three days, weather and time moral permitting. You may not be friends, but you will be very close over the voyage. No trouble will be tolerated on Captain Gale's ship. Any transgressions will result in confinement in the brig. Dinner is served at sunset, breakfast at dawn. Thank you. And with that, he turns and walks away. I immediately start cleaning the breakfast. <laughs> Hi. Is she in the same room as us? Yes. Okay. We are all three all escorted off. to the same room. There is an empty bed. Okay. I'm bending over the bed, casting something. Okay. And dirt's just flying off the bed. <laughs> Press the meditation. <laughs> Hello. That's a beautiful tone. Oh, thank you. It's... Thank you. Um, as they're talking, uh, looking at the stranger, do I notice anything, aside from what I can see that's obviously odd, do I see anything that might be dangerous about her? Make an inception. Sure. You have lovely eyes. Oh, thank you. Eleven. <laughs> Elf. My name's Sasha. Carries herself like an elf. That's all. Oh. Pretty much. Yeah, nothing really stands out other than that. Maybe spend more time with her. You can tell more, but just from first glance. Mm, yeah. Gotcha. My name's Vinley. It's nice to meet you, Vinley. This is Voss. It's an experience to meet you both. <laughs> Do you travel often? Mm, no. Oh, this is my first journey outside my home. This is my second. Oh. I'm glad to not be the only person who's not well traveled. Moss seems to know his way around pretty well. Hello, Moss. Hi. Uh, nice to meet you, Finley. Yes. Nice to meet you. So, you're heading. Is is? City of Splendors. Yes. Yes. Waterdeep. Yes. Uh, is that your, your final destination, or...? I hope so. Oh. Might as well, for a while, at least. Unless something takes me to another city. I'm, uh, I'm sort of on a, a pilgrimage of sorts. Do I recognize the symbol on her shield? 
Make a religion check. Okay. <laughs> Fifteen. It is the symbol of Akma. Perfect. You act, but more so, you actually notice that it's an al- altered symbol of Akma. It's actually, you catch the that skull is actually the symbol of Jurgal, who is the god of knowledge and the dead. But the skull has been removed right. to just the scroll, which is that of Akma. What type of pilgrimage are you on? I'm I'm seeking knowledge. Is that all? Yes. For the most part. I'm I am a servant of Akma. Oh, the shield. Yes. <laughs> it it was a gift from from a, a uh, priest of Jurgal. Interesting. He was sort of a mentor for me, so Perplexing. Well, it's, um, I, I've lived a fairly sheltered life, and uh, I, I was trained in how to take care of myself by, uh, by uh, a, a servant of Jurgal. and before I came out into the world, he thought I should be somewhat protected, so he, he gave me his armor, including the shield. I understand the weirdly sign that she's just saying her entire life yeah, story. Yeah, I was, like a stranger. I was about to say, you're very willing to share. Well, that's, that's what the whole point is, isn't it? I mean, knowledge should be shared. Experiences should be shared. Some should. Have I said something offensive? No, yet. I probably will. Give me enough time. (laughs) I'm afraid I'm not uh, socially accustomed to interacting with people, so I'm I'm, uh, a bit nervous. (laughs) I might babble. That's understandable. (laughs) Where are you from? Um, I, as this conversation is going on, I would like to leave the room. And I'm just like, I don't feel like there's going to be a battle or a presence or anything. She doesn't give off an air. No, no, no. I'd like to uh, leave the room quietly okay. and uh, attempt to start exploring the ship. Okay. Right. And you do. And over the next two days, as the ship sets sail, you guys continue to talk share too much, get to know each other. Uh, and you do learn the ship. Um, the only, and you're permitted to go everywhere except for the captain's quarters and the very bottom deck, which is where that, the, those two heavily armored guards you saw are stationed on the stairs that lead down to the final deck. Um, would it be possible if some point in time during the two days we've been going that I can kind of post, I would like to see if I can, stealthily, who comes in and out of that door and at what times. Okay. Yeah, over the... the... Go ahead and just give me a general stealth check. Sure. Not bad. (laughs) Eighteen. Um, yeah, so... I will... Yeah. Yeah. Yep, got it. Uh, yeah. Don't seem to to notice as you head uh, head through um, and kind of just sto- station up and watch. Um, one, the same person comes in and out. One at dawn. Nope. One of the well dressed individuals. Okay. One at dawn. One at dusk. They gather food. They go back in. That is it. The Armored guards do not move at all. Do I even s- at all? As in, I've never seen them rotate or nope. eat, drink, piss, nope. nothing? Nope. They just stay there. <laughs> Interesting. Also, for the record, I did not tell you where I was from. Okay. I would have responded with some experiences that to be shared, some are not. And I would continue cleaning my bed. For two days? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Every time I get out of my bed, I will clean my bed. Okay. When the uh, the individual comes out to uh, gather food, I try to engage them in conversation. Well, they seem more focused 
on their task. Okay. Uh, they greet you with a kind smile and continue to walk. Okay. At some point in time, during our two days, I would take you aside and say, in the future, please just don't introduce me to people. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just trying to be polite. I thought that when you make an introduction of yourself, you're supposed to introduce your companions. Is I'm, that... How to best say this? Um, don't feel compelled to share everything about me and about yourself to everyone you meet. All right. Not everyone is as pleasant as our compatriots back at Vogelis Temple. All right. I know you're not naive. No, no. But I water just... deep. I, I need to ask you something, actually. Why water deep? Um, it is one of the most well-populated cities. It's it's full of stories. It's it's a great repository for for knowledge and information. My father suggested it. Did he? Yes. All right. Why? <laughs> Everyone calls Waterdeep the city of splendors. Suffice to say, it's not only that. The city has many secrets in it, many that are best left undisturbed. You'll find that traveling in cities, there are many layers to these places. The surface that you see and that the city wants you to see. Mm -hmm. And then you see its heart, its core, and oftentimes something vile lurks there. Secrets are... I understand that many people think they have purpose, but... I have a difficult time accepting that they're not meant to be uncovered. I know. Just temper your enthusiasm. All That's right. all I'm going to ask. How about I try to follow your lead? Um, all right, if you want to. Try to follow your lead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've known you long enough to know how long that will last. <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best. I'll, oh, yes. I'll keep in mind that I should probably be a bit more guarded. Thank you. And don't bother them. I point, if they're in the area, to those people. Okay. Like, they're, they're actually polite. I mean, they're not interested in conversing, but I, I said hello to them, and they smiled very nicely. Do you remember what I said about finding something vile? Yes. You think there's... I have an odd feeling. <coughs> try not to engage. I... I'll try. <sighs> it's like trying to tell a dog not to go up and greet people. Like, stop, <laughs> stop! 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 I'm gonna go no. jump on them! No, yeah. <laughs> Is there anything that you would like to do, Finley? Like? Um, I mainly spend either in the room or on the deck somewhere away from everyone moving around. Just reading my book and perfecting different things in my book. Okay. Something that you also just naturally do introduce, especially you, introducing yourself to everyone, you making sure she doesn't say too much, and you being on the deck. Uh, if they come up to me, I will introduce, but I will not approach anyone yes. else. <laughs> uh, you may just naturally overhear. You come to learn the crew. Yeah. Um, spending a couple you know, days out on sea pick up names and whatnot. The main is the captain. Captain Kenilophilus Gale. He goes by Kenneth. So, uh, but Captain Gale to everyone on the ship. Um, is uh, He is a elf. His first mate, Vance Four Teeth Obsidian. Called so because he only has four teeth. Uh, he is a human. Uh, the bosun is a dwarven male 
named Ulrich Steelsmith. Ulrich. Uh, hardened, does not go easy on his crew, keeps him working, stubborn. He's uh, the bosun? He's the bosun, yep. The quartermaster, which you all met, um, but is Leah Spooner, uh, who is the, who is a half elf. She is the quartermaster. Uh, your coxswain, who is the navigator, uh, the one helming the ship, is a an odd something I don't think any of you have ever seen before. Maybe Voss. Maybe Voss. Pale bluish green skin, deep, almost blue green hair, webbed pointed ears, and almost what you sense maybe even webbed fingers. Um, but I've read about them. Is it a trident? Triton. It is not a trident. No? It is Ooh. not. Um, more, more more elementalish almost as if the seems to can command the, the, sh the ship to do things through the water that I'll just ask do I recognize is this that make nature check can and I make a nature check may I as well sure 17 9 uh, you actually have encountered a few of these and recognize this is a water genasi and what was his name? Westby Ashton. Westby. Ashen? Ash yeah, Ashton. Ashton. Does he seem sociable? Uh, yeah. Friendly enough. I go up to you and I say, you can ask him questions. He seems okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Hand resting on the on the thing. Hi. I'm um I'm Seisha. And I'm Westby. Nice to meet you. I've I've never met anyone like you. What? Sailor? Uh, no, no, you um Doxway? No, no. Of of Debutante. <laughs> no, your your people. What did you not say? Yes. Hey, what do you want to know? Where do you come from? Can't tell you that. Okay. Um, what can you tell me? Can't tell you that. So you're secretive. I'm just fine. Oh. All right. So how can I learn? Stay on the ship. Get to know me. Okay. What do you want to know? Um, what do you like to do? Can't tell you that. Oh. Um. What do you not like to do? Ooh, uh, that's a tough one. But, um, sorry, I can't tell you that. What can you tell me? I just told you that. Anything? <laughs> what do you want to know? Um... Is he armed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he seems to, uh, have a cutlass or scimitar or some type okay. of sword at his hip, but I'm he curious. makes no motions or uh, not even no, a hand. No, I was curious if he was. Yeah. How long have you served on Timor's Blessing? Uh, ten years. Oh, wow, that's a long time. Ship's old. You enjoy it? Love it. Sea is me. Mine the sea. Hmm, that's interesting. Where are you from? Oh, I'm I'm from just a, a monastery of no consequence and little renown. <laughs> I've monastery of no consequence. Yes. Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's small. Um, it's pretty much it was wiped out years ago. But uh, it was just me, my father, and um, two teachers. Well, if it was wiped out, how did you live there? Um, I was born after the plague hit. Oh wait, can't tell you that. <laughs> now you're learning. Ah. Ah. Want to learn how to sh steer a ship? I'd love to. Cool. And he's like, stand here. Okay. And he actually gets a little close. <laughs> you notice him 
getting a little familiar with you. Not okay. inappropriate. I'm just going to kind of sniff a little bit inconspicuously. Okay. <laughs> uh, and he gets behind you and he rests your arm just as he was. Yes. And this way is left, and this way is right. And the wind takes us wherever we need to go. What do you do when there's no wind? Uh, don't go anywhere. Oh. But there's always wind with Time Lord's blessing. Ooh. I heard she is a lucky ship. The luckiest there is. I would say if you've been on her for 10 years, that's, uh, that's a pretty good amount of experience. You would be an expert, I would imagine. It's easy with Time Warner. Mm. Just kind of guides herself along. Voss, yeah. I'm yeah. steering a ship. I can see that. You see him look at Voss and then instantly take his hands. <laughs> 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 I must be getting back to my job. Right. Thank you. Yep. I sailed the ship. You did. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. I hope you had fun. I did. Benley, did you see? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I learned yes. something new. Fabulous. You made a new friend. I did. Yes, he's very nice. <laughs> He's a water javasi. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of a javasi. Yes. Janasi. Janasi. Water janasi. Yes. Thank you. Either way, I've still never heard of one. Oh. Well, he is one. No, it's Dina. She pulls out her book and starts writing. She strikes a pose. Thinking that you're <laughs> drawing <laughs> something. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, all right, the last few people uh, or the officers are, uh, that you notice is uh, a human female named Evelina Camden, who is the ship's surgeon. And then every dawn and every dusk, you see a halfling male, scruffy sideburns, little top knot, rushing in and out between the doors of the kitchen and the galley. You've come to know him as Halton Naptley. He's your cook. Uh, a few of the other crew uh, just around. There's a mix of both males and females on here. Um, it's about 25 total crew. Uh, it's a fairly large ship. Uh, the ship itself is a large sailing ship, uh, three-masted. Uh, but uh, there's Blade, Grindel, Stockwell, Softy Smith, who goes by Softy, Galton Sweat, Walworth Netley, uh, who is uh, actually a halfling and uh, brother of Halton, the, the, the cook, uh, Sherlock Saber, Vale Digby, Perry Grimson, Rugby Shelby, Wayne Loki, and Cutter Whitehair Melton. Do we learn all of these names over yeah. the yeah, start with course, course, yeah. the course is three over course three No, but th there's a bunch of people around and whatnot. And so as um You would, yes. <laughs> you absolutely would. Yeah. I overheard her talking. To uh, and there's a handful of females and, and whatnot as well. Um May, I would Emily, Indiana, <laughs> various races as well. Mostly human and half elf with them, you know, but occasional dwarf and halfling. As well. mm -hmm. This is about what's uh, demographically speaking, what you find in Waterdeep. A little less Waterdeep, you'll find everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is no holes bar. Waterdeep will have every race imaginative. Mm -hmm. um, majority human, though. Waterdeep mm -hmm. is majority humans. Yeah. Humans and half elves, but no, you'll no. find every every race there. Um. <coughs> On the third day at dusk, just before dinner, those on deck, which I believe is everyone, mm -hmm. make uh, you can either make a, an active pass, uh, active perception, but Vinley, I'll get to you in a second. Anybody would like to make a perception? Okay? Sure. Eight. <laughs> Nineteen. Yeah, time out. Okay. Boss. And Vinland, 
You notice the ropes on the port side, shifting oddly. Magically? Not magically, but there's a weight to it. Like there's definitely a shift that should not shift like that. You know from being on a ship. Yeah. I put my hands on my sleeves. Okay. And it's just something, but that's just pleasing. Um, attempting not to alert anyone else, I move okay. towards the rope and like to peer over the side, attempting to remain unseen. Okay. Um, as you kind of kind of go and peer over, go ahead and make me a stealth check. And I will just say as far as I am from that side. 16. Okay. okay. Um, as you kind of peer over and look, you actually see something climbing up. And it's almost there. You see a humanoid with pale skin, almost ghostly white, but what catches you off guard is that their bits of it have scales and barnacles growing on it. Um, hair matted and almost falling out. Uh, and as as you lean over and see this, you see it just as it reaches up, tries to grab you and pull you over. I need you to make me an opposing acrobatics or athletics check. Uh, one I'm Can I see the hand come up? Uh, you do, yes. Um, 11, not as good as I thought. Um, just so happens that it also got an 11. And with that, <laughs> it, it grabs and pulls, and you get jerked, but you're able to wiggle free and move out. Um, and, uh, hey, Ross, if you'll do me a favor yep. and grab the map that's it's in the box. Okay. So, and bring that out here. I, will, I need would, everyone to roll initiative. What can I, sunset? Before that, um, <laughs> as soon as I grab, pull back, Draw and immediately yell, we're under attack! Yes, you may. Yeah, okay. Yes, you may. And that yeah. is what signals you that there is danger and everyone roll initiative. Yep. I'm done with that guy. <laughs> I'm done with you that You just guy. pull it out, yeah. I'm guessing mine are cold because they're hating me. Hmm. Can you Yes. Oh, wow. Here. Um, hold on. This for crew. And this. Everybody dies. Everybody dies. <laughs> That's how that works. Everybody. This for the I almost did it, you I can swim. And your player minis are on that side. Yep. And we have... Vinley. Let me take a second. These were hand-painted by uh, Dustin. And, um, and Ashley, my girlfriend. Ashley's girlfriend. The ship hey, was built um, by Where Dustin were you? Really? I would imagine I was probably know. leaning against the mast. Okay. So we'll put you here. Stay here. This guy. Yeah, you want to grab? grab. No, no. <laughs> there we go. Oh, look at that. It's only shocking. You, you got a guy up here, right here. Okay. And then. That's nice. It's good to see fighting music. Yeah. Dig it up. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I forgot what I rolled. I have legitimately. It was low. I know. This is. Yeah. I got distracted by the beautiful ship. Idea. I'm not, not the boss, but that I'll just go last. I know it was low. All right. So 25 to 20. Ha. Huh. <laughs> Twenty to fifteen? Ah. Not quite. Keep 
going. Fifteen to ten? I got a thirteen. All right. Yeah. Kicking things off fun. <laughs> Ten to five? Six. <laughs> I remembered. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yep, three. And she got three. Good three. Yeah. Well, she was um she was either reading the book or talking to somebody. I was looking new. at the sunset. Yep. Uh, facing the other direction. Yep. <laughs> uh, all right. So with that, um, the one that was over by you pulls himself up and lands here. Do I recognize what this is? Uh, you do not. Really? Really? You have one. It is. It um, looks. It looks mostly like a regular human, except for the barnacles and scales over its body. Also has more reason for it to die. So it has little uh, thorny spires that kind of stick off of them, like the puffer fish as well. Yep. Uh, gill ears and neck. Yep. All right. uh, and uh, then climbing up on this uh, side, and then climbing up right here are two more. And it is going to take a swing at you. I will it. That is going to be a 22 to hit. Oh, just barely. I rolled, yeah. I rolled so really it, well. It, brings, it actually brings up a hand hook, like a fish hook, like a giant meat hook, and just slams it uh, right into your shoulder. Uh, you're going to take five points of piercing damage. Holy as it buries crap. itself, it, its hook That's into your, your shoulder and pulls you down. You are now considered grappled as the hook has buried itself. That means I can't flash. move. Correct. You cannot move. That is it. Excellent. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, and then Vinley is getting. Yep. 18 to hit. Oh, even if I knew it, it doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. I just roll a 19 and a 15. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a quick campaign. <laughs> <laughs> um, not as bad. <laughs> Two points of piercing okay. damage as the hook uh, gets sunk into you, and you, uh, again, are grappled as this one actually catches you in the thigh uh, uh, and uh. buries itself into you, and it pulls it, it's trying to pull you down. Oh. Uh, and then the last one, you see it sink its hook into the shoulder of um, the doctor on the ship. Captain. Yep. Standing right in front of you, and she screams out in pain. Uh, it definitely has your attention now. Right. Yep. Uh, boss. <sighs> well, I'm not going anywhere. I might as well dance with this thing. Um, already pulled out. I'm going to attempt to make both attacks, uh, both of my attacks on this, point blank, let's dance. All right. Weird thing. Draw your rapier and your dagger. Two three. Oh, that's a nat 20. Uh, All go. right. Hey. That, all right. Um, so, how are we doing natural 20s for this game? Okay, good, very good question. That is <laughs> something that we should mention before. House, our house rule for, for natural 20s is the first di dice of your weapon dice is always max, and then you roll your additional one. Okay. That way crits will always have something extra. Yeah. That way you don't roll two ones. Two ones right. and your crit right. is worse. So. so we roll, this one has max, and then I roll again. Correct. Yes. For okay. you, don't, you do not have sneak attack on this one. I do know that. Um, so. so that's nine... 12 points of damage with the rapier. And, like, you pull up, it has its hook buried into your shoulder, and you actually, already having your, your rapier drawn, uh, you actually kind of, it leaves itself wide open. You grab it by the shoulder and take your rapier and plunge it straight up into the chin, out the back of its head, and you pull it out uh, as it collapses, the hook still in your shoulder. Uh, 
leaving there, you kind of pull it out, throw it to the side, uh, and turn. You still have a, a bonus action and a move action. All right. Um, where am I? Uh, you are right there. Okay. Closest one to me. It's the one that has its hook buried in, in the, the doctor, the, the doctor. surgeon. Okay. Um, I maintain this distance, and I'm still going to throw it. Okay. You just toss your dagger yeah, at it and make a ranged attack. Yep. That'll hit. Um, I would assume 21 to hit. 21, 21 hit. definitely hits, yes. Excellent. You are part, you are on the ship, you are working all together against a foe. There is someone within five feet. You get your sneak attack on this. Oh, shoot. Mm-hmm. Extra yeah. d6 damage, boys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so six points of damage all together on the second one. Okay. Uh, your kukri flies as it's uh, intently looking at the prey ahead of it, and you catch it off guard as it the kukri thrown slices and cuts through its chest and uh, clatters to the uh, ship's floor. It's on the other side, probably within like the five foot square yep. on the next side of that. Gotcha. Okay. Um... I want to maneuver behind the doctor. Okay. Over by Seisha. Yeah. Five, That's where she is. Five, yep. Yes. You pull up and kind of, kind of move and like the rocking ship does nothing for you. This is solid ground to you as you spring yeah. off and kind of slide behind the doctor uh, and skid up and kind of look right next to you like you have trained a hundred times mm-hmm. before in I the past three years. Look over to her and say, like any problem, take it one piece at a time. That's the next piece. Right. Uh, and with that, uh, the... Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, the, the crew goes. Um, and so um, the Evelina actually um, kind, of, kind of looking and... Um, kind of just uh, tries to um, use her bonus action to break the grapple. Yeah, <laughs> and will not. Uh, just can't. Um, and kind of, kind of looks and it's like seeing you, like the, the dagger berry in it. Looks back at you and just kind of looks and goes gonna trust you on this and kind of reaches in grabs um a patch of like some form of ointment and something on a patch and slams it into your shoulder where the wow. uh meat hook buried itself into uh and you will heal seven points of damage um, as she throws that um, healer's kit onto you, um, and then uh, pulls out me. pulls out a, a <laughs> save is changed, yep. and then draws a dagger. Uh, but that is her. Understood. Her turn. I give her a nod. Thank you. And and she, I mean, she you can see she's like gritting her teeth and she's in pain. And she's trying to get out of the hook, but can't quite do it. I just, um, I just the captain starts barking orders to everyone to uh, look lively. Um, Make sure that the below decks are uh, protected from anyone making their way downstairs from the top of the ship as the rest of the crew moves in on uh, Ulrich. uh, 20? No, no, me. From there. Oh. Yeah, we'll give him. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you. I know what he's doing. Yeah. He looks that way. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, this one That's is... Advance, four teeth. Uh, comes up uh, on that and will... Four teeth was a... Uh, he was the first man. Uh, swings uh, his scimitar um, at uh, and misses. <sighs> completely just sh- misses. Uh, Ulrich. Ulrich um, pulls out his uh, scimitar and kind of comes in. Yes. Uh, connecting. Uh, t- and that is going to do five. Five points to. 
um, and just comes in connecting right here in the upper quadrant of the shoulder, kind of buries it down a bit and pulls it out. Um, you see blood pour out, but it is thick and almost almost black, but it still has a red tint, but it is thicker than it should be. It almost comes out in globules and, and less pouring. Corpse-like? Like old corpse-like? No. Okay. And he, he yells out, Hey, you scary fuck, get off my shit! <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Leah will move up to the edge here um, and will draw a uh, hand crossbow and fires uh, at the one by the surgeon. Because surgeon. Uh, and will hit. Uh, 14. Yep, that'll, that'll hit. And do. Uh, it just kind of like nicks and like catches it like right across the cheek. Mm-hmm. Actually pierces through the cheek, but goes right out. Mm-hmm. It bites down, breaking the uh, the bolt inside of its mouth and spits it out. I look up at it like, the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then um... that's everybody else that's up there, uh, except for one of our. Man of the ship. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> Sinuses are killing me. It was a thing. It was the bolt. Mm. I know. Uh, our pistol person. Oh yeah. Draws uh, a light crossbow and takes aim, uh, but trying not to hit the surgeon, bolt goes wide. Uh, that is uh, the crew. Now it brings us to Vinley. I uh, reach up into my sleeve where my hands are. I pull out the, uh, the wooden wand and I point it at it and I say, "Fucking die!" And I cast Toll the Dead. Okay. Uh, Wisdom save the guard. Yep. Um, this like spectral bell gongs and it just like jaw almost unhinges, um, and it doesn't seem to have much of an effect. Oh. That was a natural twenty on oh, this. Fuck. It usually works. It usually kills everyone. <laughs> Here I, mean, I thought this was a lucky ship. Uh, and that, uh, you want to move? Do you want to... Uh, I have that thing in my leg. You do. <laughs> and was that a special thing that the surgeon did on a bonus action to try and get away No, you can try and... Okay, I, I want to try and get Okay, yep. Uh, athletics or acrobatics check. Your choice. Boy, I wonder. <laughs> okay. Acrobatics for a TN. That is just enough to <laughs> wiggle it your, your your way free and pull uh, pull your. I mean, it, it's painful as it, it's gotten in the meaty part of your calf as you pull it out, uh, and you can now move um, if you would like to. I'll look around, look at uh, who's the one standing next to me. It was Vance. 14? Uh, that's fourteen. Yep. Uh, and I'll go. You got this. And I'll run towards the stairs. Okay. Uh, you got it. <laughs> With my yep. wand out. Um. As you pull yourself out free out. from this hook, uh, you're on the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> you scream out in pain and jerk. And you actually pull the hook from its hand as it falls overboard. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> and I'm like, ah, ah, I'm like, natural. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sacred is now your turn. Yay! Um, how beat up is the one in front of the doctor? Uh, it has a dagger <laughs> sticking in it and a bolt okay. coming out of its mouth. Second question. I'm guessing these appear to be undead? They are. They. They. You see them taking breaths. Okay. That's what I need. To like, know. you actually see the gills on their neck. Right. Kind of mo- oh. moving. All right. Um, I am going to uh, move through the doctor, kind of the surgeon, yep. kind of mm-hmm. shove her to the side, mm-hmm. and just come down on the, the thingy. So, kind of move in over here. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, got it. All right. Really? <laughs> nope. <laughs> I rolled a four. <laughs> What's your total to hit? Yeah, um, two. These things might No, suck. plus we four, sorry. So, so eight. Eight, yeah, you come down and it just, it, it actually, with the hook still in the surgeon, moves the surgeon in front uh, of your uh, blow, and you, it makes you recorrect your swing, yeah. and you, so you don't hit the surgeon. Uh, goes wide. 
All right. Uh, you still have a bonus action. Um, I don't think I can do anything as a bonus right. action. Let me check. All right. All right. That is that. Oh wait, actually, can I? I have two weapon fighting. Can I use my hammer? Um, do you have your shield out? I probably would actually. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> I mean, if you did. I didn't specify. If, but... if you I mean, you were sitting on the on the things. So your yeah. shield could have been on your back. So if you wanted to draw your hammer yeah. and your sword, then I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. That, yeah. that would make sense. Okay. All right. Then yeah. So you you. You come up, you drew your sword as, as they approach, yeah. now you draw your hammer as a free action, mm -hmm. and now you can attack with your offhand hammer. Thirteen? Thirteen will hit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is this a sound you make? <laughs> yes, she, she makes a little squeal as she contacts, makes contact with it. So that is going to be five. Uh, you, your offhand does not add your... Oh, so then three. No, wait, that's supposed to be the D4. No, I'm sorry, that's not right. That was supposed to be a D4. Oh, good. I'm tired. Oh, hey, four! What up? Who knew? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so how much? Four? Four. As uh, it brings the doctor uh, in, you actually redirect, roll off of the doctor as Kenji have told you, to move with your surroundings. Mm -hmm. uh, move to the other side again, and with that, keep that momentum of this thing going, and just crack it straight into the head, and actually have to pull the hammer out. Mm -hmm. As you see, there is a concave hole that's just oozing that same viscous look with the other one. Uh, oh. And down it goes. Yay! Anything else on deck? Uh, yes, there's still the one okay. on the other side. Um, and so as, as that one comes out, it, watching the, the hook goes, it actually reaches back and pulls out a harpoon uh, oh, that was God. strapped to its back. Um, and uh, it will actually take and, and stab at 14. Oh, not 14. There's only got four teeth left. How many are you going to take? Oh, I'm a, no, I didn't All right, I'll just take it. Okay. Got it? Um, harpoon has a, a spear, but also has the, the nasty hook that a harpoon does. As it sl uh, stabs through the, the bicep of his arm, you can see it get lodged and hooked onto his arm as he is now grappled again. Sorry, he is now grappled. Um, as as this happens, all of a sudden, coming up just in front of where the other one fell over, mm -hmm. an individual climbs up as a tentacle wraps around the ropes and pulls itself up. You realize that the tentacle is actually attached to its arm. As it pulls up, it looks up as its jaw unhinges and you realize it is actually the jaw of a shark that comes up and you see sea urchin spines come off the back of it, down the spine, uh, and over the shoulders and down the arm. Mm -hmm. uh, a whale's fin jolts out the back of it as it looks at you with large octopus-like eyes, and its hair is matted seaweed as it pulls itself up and right at you, Seisha, as it just... <laughs> 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 we need a myriad of different things. 23 to hit? That oh. hits. <laughs> Maybe. That is only uh, three points of bludgeoning damage as its hand breaks across, uh, only getting a little bit of you past the armor. Okay. This isn't necrotic damage. It is not. Chance it's not. Right. So that's three, you said? Yes. Oh, man. Uh, the second one, so as it comes across with the claw, the second one, uh, it actually comes back uh, with a with a backhand. It catches you squarely, like as you're bringing uh, the hammer up to parry, you don't actually expect the backhand as it connects you right on the jaw. You actually feel your jaw dislocate. Uh, as, certain, as a couple of the spines sticking up, that's how you got it. Uh, stick into, it pulls away. 
and rakes your uh, face, doing nine points of damage. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm yep. uh, I meant, uh, okay. Yep, uh, as it critted on you. Uh, and you see as she goes down, her lower jaw just cracks, and she collapses. Um, and as it does, it actually um, turns to you as it brings its tentacle up and whips its tentacle right at you. Um, and, and as it does, it reaches back, and the tentacle, still draped on the, the rope itself, uh, catches it, it can't, and it takes a second to unwrap the, the ends of the tentacle, and then kind of then turns and you know jaw rows of teeth of the shark like jaw on its uh, face kind of turn towards you, uh, and yeah, that's its turn. Poor oh, move, you won't get another. And now it is your turn. All right, um, I look immediately to the medic and I say, tend her. Wrap around to where my dagger is. Yep. Pick it up. Got it. It's a free action. And all in on this thing. I'm Got assuming it. since she's unconscious, I don't get a flanking bonus. You don't get it. You're just just <laughs> off enough from the uh, from the, the, the doctor. body distract her enough that I can get a no, flanking no. bonus. No, the, the ship the ship doctor was shifted just slightly to get ah. flanking, but understood. Unfortunately, you do not have flanking bonus. I attack with short sword and dagger. Got onto it. this thing. Um, okay. That is another natural twenty. <laughs> Wow. Awesome. Dude. All uh, right. Um, Again, the doctor's there. You see can. what he's doing? <laughs> you can uh, uh, give your sneak attack with this. You will Does double those dice. You will not and maximize. So, get, so it'll be eight for your, your D8 for the rapier. No, it's D6 for the. Oh, you're doing a short sword. It says short sword. Is it rapier? We never changed that. Oh, then short sword's fine. So. Would they have the same no, damage? No, a rapier would be a D8. It should be a rapier. I, uh, because rapier. you're a dex. Yeah. I would like to have a rapier. Okay. <laughs> All right. You have a rapier? So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like we didn't. For some reason, we couldn't do that. I don't know. But if well, we get a rapier, I'm. Note, rapier. <laughs> I got it. I'm changing it right now. Cool. Thank you. Um, All right. That's eight. Then, and. Yeah, only your oh. weapon die is maxed on the first one. It does not max any of your other dots. Yep, so you'll roll a d8 plus 2d6. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, sorry, we'll go ahead and write the whole d8 down. Five. So, seven points of d I don't max, do I roll the extra d8? Uh, you roll the extra d8. Okay. And the 2d6. So it's for the 8, 15, 14, 15, 15 points of damage. And that's with your modifier bonus? Yes. As well? yes. Oh, it. wait, no. Uh, 18 points of damage. There it is. 18 yep. points of damage altogether. In, enraged by watching really one of the true friends you've had in a long time go down and collapse, knowing that this is her first trip into the world, you are filled with just this rage as you s just step over, grabbing your dagger, pulling up, and just you catch it square in the ribs, and you actually hear it <gasps> gasp as you pull out and you see... This is a killing blow. It is not. Okay. Uh, and you Holy pull God. it out, and it just it kind of stumbles a bit, but then just looks at you as, you know, again, that same blood, dark Icker. black acre pours out of it. This is no tints of red whatsoever. It is black. Mm. Pours out of it. As it looks to you, it's eye, big yellow eyes. <laughs> and it's all of its spines stand up like hackles on a dog as it looks infuriated at you as you are its new target. Make your second attack. Super. That's not a natural 20. That's still good. 19 to hit. 19 hits. Yeah. Three points of damage on that one. Got it. There it is. <laughs> is that enough? No, no, it's, no, still, it's, still, it's still, still going. Yeah. Okay. This one is different than the others. Yep. This one you bring it across and it scapes. It, it actually scrapes on the on the thick hide that it has on its skin. Uh, you cut into it, but not nearly as deep as that first puncture with the rapier. Um, and 
And uh, yeah, that ends boss. It is now the crew's turn. Um, the doctor, yep, uh, Evelina will immediately pull out another one of those oil herbal filled patches and slams it down onto uh, the wound, uh, across like the across the jaw, and like puts it right across the jaw. Um, as she leans down, and actually, as she sets it down, she actually resets your jaw. Oh, um, as she does it, and you will heal eight. Yay. Uh, uh, the captain gives more orders and uh, tells them to focus on the one that is mainly injured right now, and once that one is down, to go for the new one. More. He's telling them to focus fire. Uh, yep, and uh, with she, that, uh, the crew will attack at. Uh, for, is she back on her feet? Nope. Nope. Uh, you she see her eyes. She, she takes a breath of air. <gasps> yep. Uh, um, so, which Ulrich. one was that? Ulrich hit. Uh, Ulrich hit. Got it. Uh, and four teeth did not. Oh. Missed. Uh, he had five. Okay, still there. Uh, and then... Oh, God, excuse me. Bless you. Let's the one up here with the crossbow hit. Uh, okay, uh, that's Leah, the quartermaster. Um, we'll do... And that is enough to bring it down. Yay! So those three nice. take down this one. Yep, and now that was her we action to do that. This one uh, uh, to go after uh, the... Just the one. Yep, yep. Uh, we'll call that... Uh, that's old softy smite. Uh, he misses again, trying not to hit the, everyone in the fray there. He's not the best shot with a crossbow, as he's just a deck hand. <laughs> and just happened to see it, pick it up, and he's like, Ugh. With the hits, <laughs> the noise you made, you have to yeah. make a check to see if I have any clue what these things are? Uh, yes, you that will be That would be an action? It, 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 it'll say bonus action. Yeah, it would be your okay. bonus action to kind of search your memory okay. and kind of go through right. that. Um, all right, that is the crew. Uh, Benley. Oh, oh. <laughs> Seeing all this getting wrapped up, hopefully. Um, I will cast Chill Touch from where I am, backing up the steps at Big Boy. Got it. Just want to go to the top? Yeah, well, you move, move her to the top. Right? Thank you. Wisdom. Uh, 15 to hit? It, what's that say? Oh, no, this one's to hit. This okay. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 15 will hit. Perfect. Uh, really? Really? One point of uh, damage. As uh, this hand creeps up and grabs him in the face. Okay. Yeah, this spectral, almost ghost-like hand reaches up and just grabs onto its, like, around the throat and kind of you see part of its kind of flesh and energy drain just slightly uh, before it just kind of brings the tentacle up and swipes and it dissipates and uh, you see that the hand was trying to crush uh, the air out, but the gills are back here. Uh, is that it? Bonus action? Uh, I will, uh, I already Can you move up to there? Bonus action? I have nothing. Okay, all right. Uh, Seisha. I am going to stand up. up? Uh, yeah. Okay, so attack your movement to stand up, right? And I am swinging on this sucker. Okay, so okay. you have your, your you long sword move. and your hammer, light yeah. hammer. I'm going to use my bonus action to uh, try to figure out what he is. Okay, okay. For, all right. So uh, you also recall your training, mm -hmm. uh, and you know that it's more advantageous to stand on the other side. If you would like to man maneuver yourself, you still have enough movement to do so. I would like to do that, yes. Okay. That would allow you to attack with advantage as you were yes. flanking. <laughs> as Belsun taught you both to use each other's to your advantage. Hey! That's a uh, 20. 20 hits. Yay! All right. Okay. Anything you want to add to the attack or anything like that you want to do? I don't have anything I can do yet. Mm -hmm. Wait for it. I don't have the uh, the fun stuff yet, so that's going to be my longsword. That's going to be five points of damage. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Really? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> the fun yeah. stuff doesn't happen. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and All right. then, um, what is so this? how much damage? Uh, five. Great. Five damage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. And yes. I guess it would be an insight. Um, it will not. Uh, oh, it will actually be. Be nature. Nature. Nature or arcana or even religion. I'll go arcana. You could. You could really do any of those on this. Yeah. No, that, uh... It's fine. What's the total? Five. You have never seen or read about anything like this in your studies. <laughs> Can I buy new dice? <laughs> we'll dissect them when we're done. Ah. <laughs> When Dave yeah. from Meeple Madness returns, yes, you can die. <laughs> <laughs> I bought my dice before he left. <laughs> uh, all right, so um, that is Seisha. Uh, you've moved. You've done that. We'll run a section there. All right, that brings us to you guys are all gone. I'm going to around as it turns and makes its focus on you. You're not the scariest thing to see, my friend. A 13. 13. Misses. All right. Yeah. It yeah. brings its its gnarled claw. It swipes. You yes. parry <laughs> parry with your kukri. Now that you have both in your hand, you get that nice dual stance. Mm -hmm. Sixteen. Sixteen does it. This one wow. kind of you parry away, but the other one it, it kind of redirects at the last second and brings its uh and catches you right across the stomach, like uh, just under the ribs. Mm. Uh, as it does that, it releases some of its quills. And to your body Great. with a 19 to hit. Certainly. So on the first one, you're going to take four points of bludgeoning damage from the, Very the well. claw. Uh, you take three points of poison damage. And then I need a constitution saving throw from you. Certainly. So. <laughs> that ain't bad. Um, constitution, that's straight with the die roll. 18. You're good, yeah. You do not. You feel the poison enter into your blood, but you're hardy enough. You just bite your teeth and grin to it. So you took a total of seven points of damage on that, just so you know. With the poison and the. I'm still standing. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, that is it, and and it and it just <laughs> teeth just coming at you as it as it now looks like it's about to lunge to your and just bury its teeth into your face. But it is now the crew's turn. Um, do I go for the crew? Yes, you do. You do. Uh, sorry, it is the boss's turn. It is boss's turn. I don't know yeah. why I said the crew. Uh, I, was like, I was like, you got attacked. It was your turn. You're done yep. now, right? That's yep. what happens. <laughs> boss, it is now your turn. Sorry. Um, rapier. Yeah. Straight through. All right. With advantage. With advantage. Ew, you are advantage. flanking with Seisha. You guys are those three years of training. Yeah, yeah. Um... 14 to hit. 14 hits. Well, how about that? That's max damage, too. 11 points of damage. Sings, sing us its swan song. And tell us how it got. As it lunges, flash of anger. And for a moment, I feel at home. I want to make this death as painful as I possibly can. Seeing on its body, I want to bury the rapier straight through the jaw that's jutting at me, bury the kukri into its shoulder, and then pull them both back apart slowly. And you do, and the rapier goes up and pierces, and you actually, as you thrust, you flip your grip on it and use that and bury the kukri in, and as you do, using the leverage of the rapier, and bring the kukri down and just cut it from here until about here. I want to hear what stops. sound it makes as it dies. <laughs> Come close to what I think is an ear and say, I don't care what's waiting for you to be on. It's not as scary as me. And then, <laughs> out. And as, as you do, and it gurgles, you're not quite sure if you were just hearing things, but you almost think you heard it laugh on its final gargle of air. 
as it collapses to the ground. I resheed. Very hurt. Um, <laughs> I reach over. Thank you. And cast Leon Hands. Get a five. Uh, it's sickening how close that brings me back to full. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys stand fast and ready along with the crew. You guys look over the edge and anticipating anything else that might come. Oh. When all of a sudden, from below deck, you hear... Hole has been breached! Take it on water! I immediately look for the closest lifeboats. Is there, is there any attached to the ship? Uh, there, there, there's, there's the one on the back that is like your row to, to shore. Uh, and there's actually two hanging on the, on the back. Um, and then, and then the, ca- the captain just immediately starts shouting commands uh, and actually uh, shouts in uh, someone you hadn't met before because they stayed mainly below deck. Uh, you actually see as kind of comes from around it, c- carrying many tools, and you actually see as they start going and pulling scraps of wood uh, as the main carpenter starts making his way down. Um, and and they start you start seeing repair teams like. Again, this is not the first time this has happened. They just go into almost like clockwork uh, repetition, just moving down. What do you guys do? I offer to help move stuff. I'm a big, strong girl. They take you up on that. I examine the dead body to see if I know what this was. Go ahead and make me a nature nature or arcana (laughs) check. Yeah. God. An 11. No idea. Like, what is this side of the table? I know. <laughs> uh, well, Ulrich comes up to you, Voss, and he says, You're alive. I call that pretty lucky as he runs down. <laughs> Fair enough. She's helping because, of course, she is. You're dissecting things. Um, and then, and then as, <laughs> as you are making your way down, you hear. Um, another shout and everyone kind of hears it you hear it more soundly and you hear bodies more falling below deck they breached from below Evelina, quirk i'm gonna and, and and the surgeon immediately takes takes off down and do you want me here do you want you. me helping people she passes you and doesn't just i'm gonna turn to the you. nearest crew member do you want me here or do you want me helping people they don't they're they're just like i just and Wherever you're best suited. Yeah, and just kind of goes. I'm going to run and use medicine on anybody who's unconscious. Okay. And make your way downstairs. Yep. As, as, you, as you make your way, you actually see that there is uh, the one of the heavily armored, uh, or sorry, the, the well-fancied person is mm-hmm. like gone, throat ripped out, uh, and there's a trail of blood that leads down the stairs into the lower decks. Okay. Um, I'm going to going? follow that trail of blood. I, knowing now that Seisha is not going to leave or flee, unfortunately, <laughs> I, she's already down there, but mm-hmm. I, uh, attempt to follow. Like, okay. I probably saw her go down, but I'm far enough behind her. I mean, I don't know. Got it. I'll follow her close. Are the, one of the guards is gone from in front of that room. Correct. Correct. Right. Uh, I will do my best to stay out of the way. Okay. And not get in literally anybody's way because I have no idea what to do. Okay. Never really been on a boat. Now I know, I would know the procedure that they're doing for a hole breach, correct? Uh, I mean, you know that if a hole was breached, then there's water coming in. Okay. Um, but it, it appears as if they are, they're on it. <laughs> They seem to be well versed in how to handle the situation. Okay, yeah. just they're doing a good job of it, though. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. You take a second to make sure that it. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. And you're. Like, okay. I'm just gonna get in the way. I'm just <laughs> attempting yeah. to find and follow. Um, down. As you come down, you see one of the the well dressed men, um, the one that has actually has a tray of food because this was this happened right at dusk near. Mm-hmm when food was about to be, has a tray of food scattered about and just 
throat ripped Dead. out, blood. I mean, you assume there is no, there is no, nothing oh. here. It's all gone. I, nope. out of curiosity and potential need, search his corpse stealthily, hopefully that nobody will see me taking advantage of the situation. Make a slide of hand check? Certainly. That's not as good as I would like. <laughs> um, eight. Uh, you kind of just kind of do a quick pat down and don't, like, nothing. Damn. Ooh, drop of blood. Um, Ooh, drop of blood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you see a trail of blood leading downstairs. You see Sasha anywhere? Uh, nope. Uh, and you actually see uh, th- there's two sets of stairs that go down, one on this side of the ship and one on so one in the aft, one in the. I see one following the trail of blood. Um, bow, bow, uh, um, and yep, aft is where. Uh, aft is bow. No, bow is front. Yeah, aft is back. So you're you're at the aft. The bow, they, people are going down the bow. And I draw weapons again. I go under the assumption that she would follow where the blood is just because she would assume people are hurt down there. Okay. And I make my way down the trail of right. blood. Uh, as you get down there, you find um, Evelina <laughs> over bodies. The entire contingent that came on board is just massacred. Um, there are, and you see those same like, actually go ahead and make me Perception checks. And you can go ahead and do this too since you're here. Um, hey, that's decent. Uh, 17. 22. Okay. Um, immediately you see those same quills that you pulled out of your own all over into these bodies. You see where the like suction cups of a tentacle burn across the faces, the arms. Uh, you see teeth and gash marks ripped out. I don't recognize these creatures, anything of what they've done. Okay. Not Do I see the all. veiled figure anywhere? You, you see every person accounted for it in that contingent, except for one. The veiled figure? The veiled figure. Gotcha. In fact, in your perception, you actually see one of the heavily armored, but you actually see kind of and you see like kind of blood part. You see one of them move. It seems to be the only one that, that that has moved so far. I make a quick. It's Evelyn. I have a living one over here. I'll go and try to patch him as best I can. Okay. Um, as you go ahead and make me a medicine check, as you run over, um, you see Evelina is like on to the next one. I am doing that, and okay. she looks and sees that you have like you're over there. Uh, saw you touch him and, and his wounds closed. Yeah, four... Assumes that you're a cleric and just lets you handle it. <laughs> I do not handle it well. Right. <laughs> right. What was your total medicine? Five. It's okay. You, you're you actually thrown aback because as you go to check, you realize that you can see in his mouth and you realize that he actually has no tongue. But it doesn't look new. Right. Like, it looks, looks like it's old. an old... And if you're talking about what were you going to say before? I wanted to, because these things were freakish or behaved in strange ways, I wanted to gingerly check exactly what this was to see if it was human even. Uh, It definitely, you definitely look and see that it's round ears, human features, nothing out of the order, you know, average height. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's, you're taken aback as a voice enters your mind. Both of you. Both of you. You also mm-hmm. notice um, Evelina kind of look okay. around as this uh-huh. happens. Okay. Hey, I'm taking uh, the serene one. For what reason? I do not. And with that, you the voice immediately cuts off and you watch as the body goes limp. Uh, what can I roll to recognize that title? You can roll a religion check. Yes. Actually, I'm going to go with this one. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. Does not ring any bells? I don't care. No, <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Dead. Um... Um, and as he follows, and you Too notice people here to search the, the, okay. the helmet kind of rolls off, and you notice the head is bald, and there are intricate tattoos just all 
over, like, leading from his eyes. With recognition check of anything, I would see on that, though. Um, make a history check. May I? Thirteen. Uh, yes. May as well. N- nothing catches, nothing stands out. Fine. Um, if there's no immediate danger here, I... Go ahead and get your roll. No. Mm-mm. I saw what you rolled. Anyway, um, I... Evelyn seems to have it handled here. Let's move elsewhere, preferably top deck. Okay. What are you doing? While that's happening, I'm using this motion to take the chance to search the three dead bodies uh, under the guise of me examining them. Okay. Uh, they literally have nothing. They're, uh. they're, they were already just in seaweed and rags and main, mostly naked anyway. Uh. Uh, there's just nothing about them. I will uh, do this with my hands and cast press the dictation on my entire body. Okay. Just. Yep. Uh. Get your priorities. Hey, you found a couple of hooks. Some yeah, harpoons. Hooks, harpoons. Um, Some netting. Yeah, you. Di- I will neatly place them. In Go the ahead, and you can make me a medicine check. Actually, as you investigate the body. Okay, that's cool. Fourteen. With your study of bodies, you can definitely see signs of what almost appear to be mutation, like things that should not, bones that are not right, things that are not correct. Do I get a sense that it's a natural mutation or a magical mutation? It is definitely not natural. Awesome, I love that. Good. But also being a student of magic, you would know if they were to cast something on themselves, like alter self to give them advantage in the water, it would have faded away. This is weird. Very weird. The crew unceremoniously dumps the bodies overboard. That's why I placed the harpoons and hooks in a pile next to the bodies. I'm so glad we have those now. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm just going to sit on the deck, just in shell shock kind of mode. I go back below, mm-hmm. kind of ensuring that she's okay, and go the opposite way that I did previously. Okay. Uh, it leads down, and you actually, as you lead down that way, you actually step in water. Oh. Um, and the crew has started a bucket brigade. They're getting it out, and the carpenter has set and has patched the, the hole. It's trickling, um, but it'll definitely need repairs once it hits water deep to, be, to not take on water, but it's not busting in as it was. It seems like the crew is really good at, good at what they do, and the carpenter has taken command and they've patched the hole enough to where the ship isn't going to go down. Back to the other side, back in the room with all the bodies. Yep. I want to search the body. Absolutely. <laughs> I, uh, I approach Seisha as soon as he leaves. Uh, as you make your way, um, you actually pass by Evelina. Mm-hmm. She's making her way out and back up to see if there's any crew member that still needs any attention. She looks at you and she says, there's nothing left. They're all dead. Did you hear someone? No. Okay. She kind of shakes her head. I head keeps walking. Back downstairs. And uh, I have a roll here. I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to roll for. <laughs> I just have a number. Uh, investigation. Okay. That's a 20 then. You kind of go through and you find that the armor that the gentlemen are wearing, is, it's its nice, um, it's half plate, would be considered half plate, but it's weirdly designed, um, comes to points and intricate weaves and into the scales and it's just, it's different. It's not like, it's of a culture you've never experienced. Um, the All of the bodies have these intricate tattoos, almost tribal in nature. Um, All of them are human, Mm -hmm. save for two that are (laughs) half-elves. And you notice that on... You don't find... There's no 
other than the weapons on the, which are were just long swords, and uh, they had daggers. Um, there's nothing. No money. No writing utensils. No no standard gear that like you have. No backpacks. Nothing. All they had was the swords, and uh, so they had shields as well. And that's it. Anything dealing with this serene one that I heard in my head. Nothing. Clues that I can discern anything. Nope. There's just all of the. There was. Ten in total of these mon- monas- monastic monastic that you uh, brain was just like monastic. That's not right. Uh, <laughs> uh, monastics, man. There, yeah. Uh, mon- monastic nice. individuals that are all that though they have the same colors, their garb is different, styled in different cultures, um, but okay. they're all definitely monks of some sort. This is going to be an odd thing I'm going to do. Okay. Um, knowing that, uh, I would like to take my dagger and cut pieces of the cloth that look distinct that I might be able to get someone to identify later on and take those with me. Okay. I would also like to scalp one of the people with the tattoos that are distinct as well. Okay. Make sure to make note of that. Um, Tattoo scalp. Uh, and put the note serene one next to those and uh, go ahead and make and a medicine check for the scalping <laughs> see how <laughs> let's see how good this survival. is survival survival sorry yeah survival like skinning yeah survival that's not bad um 11 eh, i mean uh, it's, it's a scalp it's hard <laughs> it's it's actually hard because it's there's no hair Mm-hmm. So you're, to, you can't have something. You can't really have anything to grip. So I mean, it's <laughs> it takes a while. It's like starting. A and at one point, you. like one of the other crew members like walks in, sees what you're doing, <laughs> and just slowly backs <laughs> away, <laughs> turns around, and just is, does it. One of the lesser crew, the the, the, the deck hands. And just, if he's, do I see him come in? Uh, you don't notice it. You're you're okay, in your. You're focused. Trying to get your thumbnail in there. Like, you know, <laughs> but yeah, you have it. Scalp, got it. Mm-hmm. I Tattooed bald scalp. Place them um, on my person in some kind of patch or pocket that will hopefully contain the smell that is never really going to come out of that. But I would like to keep those. Uh, I'd like to keep those with me. All right, sounds good. You can take another piece of piece of cloth and wrap the flap scalp. of skin up in that to hopefully deter any of the leftover um, blood that would be dripping off of this. Chunky oh, yeah. Do you want maggots? Because that's how you get maggots. <laughs> that's why we do have nice things in the house. I want to know what entered into my brain. Sometimes, sometimes if you want to know things, you got to scout people. That is a lesson we're going to learn over and over again, okay? Uh, you also want to put uh, monastic robes. Gotcha. Uh, pieces. <laughs> Again, with the uh, anecdote of the serene one. The serene one, gotcha. Uh, you don't really have anything to block the smell <laughs> as of right now, but you know, that's the best you got. Doesn't smell. This one seems yeah. pretty good at cleaning things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there anything else you guys would like to do on oh, this day? While that's happening, I approach Seisha. Um, Overshare, um, you seem rather quiet. Are you okay? I. I didn't expect it to be like that. Like what? What be like what? I... It was always so much easier in the, the yard. Oh. I know that was the first fight I've been in in the, about 60 years. It gets, it gets better. I don't touch it. I go to touch it, but don't touch it. Um, I have an idea, but I don't want to get in trouble. I do that a lot. It's um, fun. You know that ring that they were in? The guarding one? Or the... Yeah. Yes. I think we could sneak in there. I think we can try. Everyone seems a bit distracted. I think we're ready to go. Have you ever heard of the serene one? Have I ever heard Religion of the <laughs> No, actually, no. How do you say? <laughs> I'm 
Fourteen? Cool. Um, no. I... Not at all, actually. Right. Why? Um, just a name that popped into my head. <laughs> um, I remember it, but I don't remember it, I guess. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's, yeah, let's see if we can sneak in there. Yes. What? Real time sneak into the okay. You guys make your way down. Mm -hmm. Met with no resistance. Everybody seems to be occupied. Okay. Uh, you see a crew member kind of walk past you with eyes wide, <laughs> uh, and just kind of shaking his head. And he's taken back with everything that's happened. Uh, but I just kind of reach out and squeeze his shoulders and passing. <laughs> <laughs> <Literally. laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. And he just, it just keeps going like frazzled. Yeah. Um, General rule is and, uh, good not to touch anyone, like ever. Okay. It is about that time that you actually see Voss coming up from. I had a thought. Yeah. There's no one in their room now. I scoured the place pretty good, but you are welcome to look. They really ravaged that place. Um, I mean, they tore the head off one of the guys. <laughs> it's awful. I don't remember that. It was pretty bad. You were you were in shock. Um, oh. You're welcome. Make to a deception. Make a deception check. Should I roll insight? You can roll insight. No. Oh, that's a one. No. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, amazing. Thirteen. My passive insight is a thirteen. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. It, that's a one, I mean, you've yeah. spent enough time with him the past three years to know. Boss. Shoot. Decapitate him, man? I did not decapitate him, man. You're welcome to go in there and look. I will stand guard while you do. All right. We'll talk later. Yes, we will. Thank you. As down I there. walk past yeah. you, all you smell is lavender as I walk past you. Uh, make an investigation check. Mm. Which is weird. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm helping. I'm gonna okay. Okay. Yeah, oh. You are being 14? helped. You can roll with advantage. I'm giving you another shot. Which I should not have. <laughs> yeah, 14. Alright. Again, you look around, and the only really thing that stands out is the scout head of one of the armored warriors. <laughs> I have my back to the room, so <laughs> just kind of put me up to the side. Um, you do see the other one comes off, and you see tattoos all on the forehead and the head. Is, what is that? Any just, significance to them yeah. that I would recognize? Make a general intelligence check. Okay. Okay. Eighteen. Nothing stands out. It's definitely, they definitely have a pattern. There's a pattern to it. You, you immediately see a pattern, but you can't tell what the significance of it is. Gotcha. That's pretty. And it, you said it looked tribal almost? It has that, that kind of tribal feel to okay. it. Okay. Um, it is, you know, it does not um, make a history check, actually. Both of y'all can do that. That's a one. <laughs> Hey! There we go. There we go. Twenty. You know for a fact that they are not Thayan tattoos. Hmm. That's interesting. I just want to know why he scalped this one. Well, to be fair, we don't know that it was him. <laughs> for sure. Am I hearing any of this, by the way? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Go ahead, Sasha. Look at my face. It... Okay, well, it wasn't like this earlier, but we don't know what was It could have been one of the crew members. Maybe the shaken one? Possibly. I mean, that would explain his, his demeanor. Mm. Yeah, I know. I know. 
<laughs> Sometimes men do strange things in a crisis. <laughs> At like, some point, you're going to have to explain to me how a crisis situation devolves into scalping people. Yes, I don't I would like understand that. how I would have to explain that. that Did you at least like tan it? I don't have time to tan things. Go this, get isn't, this isn't a luxury death we've just had here. We don't have time. Well, for that. you could always go to the kitchen and get some salt to put on it. Are we having this actual conversation? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I I come. I come around to where both of you are. I'm just practical. And... Yes, I did that. Why? Does he smell yet? <laughs> no, okay. You heard the voice. Didn't you? I saw it on your face. What was that? I don't know. And I want to know what we're getting into. And if that means I have to do something disgusting like this, and so be it. Um, That's fair. Interjection? What voice? One of the men who was in the company was dying, and... That one? He somehow spoke to us. But... No, not the scalped no. one. It was that one over there. He, he spoke to us somehow, but... In our minds, he didn't actually speak. But I heard him. Do I know of any abilities, like magical or otherwise, that would allow someone to do that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, right. There's a ritual that allows yeah. you to do it. Yeah. Okay, that's not totally uncommon, but it's weird. Okay. Still. I mean, as he was dying, it was unsettling. Yeah. I understand. I, I get why you did it. I don't. Still. And no. He's doing it to, to get information, to gather knowledge on it. And I mean, you could have drawn it on a piece of paper, but I'm not the best that's artist. very expedient. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Whatever the case, I don't think there's anything else we can do here. Yeah. So you should have. You want to keep your mind occupied, you can help the crew continue to fix the ship. Aye. Right. You can help the crew, or are going to stay out of this room. Oh! I just seem to now just walk up. Yeah. Um, we're not going to touch this room. We're going to have the Water Habian watch take note, and we're not going to disturb any of the bodies so that we are absolved of anything of whoever this group may be. You don't know who they are? No. Alright. So, dinner's up. Oh, I don't think I could eat right now. Don't blame you. Do you need help with anything? Yeah, you're getting out of this room. Right. Who was this that was speaking? Just a regular crew member. Oh, okay. I walk out of the room. Captain. Yeah. Captain's orders. Hmm? I walk, I walk out. out of the room. Walk out? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. As he said, like, absolve us of all this, I was, like, slowly walking towards it. <laughs> As he was speaking, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Okay. Huh? What? Thank you. Uh, closes the door, Check pulls out a ring of keys, and locks it. Some experience of them to be shared. Make note that this crew member has keys to the rest of the ship. Is he covered in blood? Or are they, either of them covered in blood? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> You're super I, I, right there. I right, dismantled that thing. But yeah. it was inside of his own. covered in ichor and. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, no, I definitely didn't touch either. Um, I will snap both my fingers and clean them. Okay. Well, one of the I can't deal with dirty people. I'm sorry. That's handy. That, that was fantastic. I know, right? <laughs> you even smell of lavender. It's hot. <laughs> That's a little unsettling. <laughs> <laughs> you smell so pretty, boss. <laughs> um, name again. Vinley. Vinley. V e n l e e. No y. No i. L e e. Vinley. Yes. 
Okay. Thank you. Anything else that you guys would like to do while on this journey? Um, I'd like to go find the captain, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, wherever he may be. It was, um, what was his name? Can captain I, Gale. Gale? Can I, Gale? Uh, I'd like to uh, approach him wherever he may be, assuming he's not busy directing his crew. He seems to always kind of be a little busy, <laughs> but you find a little opening. Okay. Let's go up to him and I say... I've spent a number of years in the sea, and I've never seen anything like this. Any idea what just tried to kill all of us? Uh, I too have spent a lot of time in the sea, and I have no idea what that was. <laughs> Nor have I ever seen anything like that, and it's a bit unsettling. A bit, a bit. This is a personal question. I understand if you can't answer this, but do you know anything about the crew the veiled woman and the armored guards that were traveling below deck. I do not. What I do know is they paid very well to be on my <laughs> ship. And paid very well for me not to ask questions. Understood. This cargo seemed safe. They carried no weapons except for the guards that were with them. Seemed fine to me. But I guess someone wanted them more. And they were headed to Waterdeep. They were? Well, they were not headed to Waterdeep. They were actually on our journey to the Moonshay Isles. Moonshay Isles? Have I ever heard of that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What do I know about that? Aside from wolves. Sea <laughs> whale. Sea whale. A whale. The whales were singing. Oh, that was a whale. Yes, it was. And the moon went high. How about that? <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're very familiar with it. It's uh, a group of cluster of isles uh, to the west um, of off of the Sword Coast. Hmm. So it's just an, a chain of islands. I'm just gonna go through whatever books I have with me and see if I can find <laughs> any record of the Serene one. Uh, without a rule, no. Okay. Um, like I said, you know these books. Yeah. Backwards yeah. and forwards. Okay. Having the twin, like not really knowing, but that title using my the researcher, would I know where to look to find something about these people? Sure, in Waterdeep, there's lots of places yeah. you can find. That's what I figured. Yep. Uh, also, I want to approach Sasha. Okay. Sasha, this is probably like when we're getting ready for bed. Um, how old are you? 22. Oh, so you're not young in human standards. No, I'm, I, I guess, a young adult. Oh, okay. My mistake. I thought you were a very large child. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> no. <laughs> not, I'm not sure how to take that. that. That's... Her face looks genuinely puzzled. Wait. No. She's definitely, she's lying. She I'm, is a child. I've, I've led a very sheltered life. This is the first time I've ever left home. Oh yeah, I, I remember you were children. Yeah. I apologize it's for calling you a child. That's okay. Good night. It's the innocence that really pulled it out of you. Yeah. And I like roll over and like, mm. innocence, child, child, human child. Well. Unless there's anything else, the rest of the trip goes by uneventful. You arrive in the City of Splendor's Waterdeep. The ship pulls up, you see that the first thing that catches your eye is the towering statues that stand over the city. What you can see as you come up to the coast, hundreds of feet above the tallest tower. At first you think maybe the city is under attack, but then you notice that they're not moving. Like marble and these statues carved in their place, but who could carve something so large, so detailed? Those are exquisite. <sighs> Why don't you give me perception checks for everybody? Come on, little bird. Be my friend. Hey. Twelve. <laughs> uh, 
seven. Um, not particularly good. I got He's a so stunned. Got a yeah, <laughs> so stunned. <laughs> What'd you get? Um, that was perception five. <laughs> yeah, no. they're pretty. Yeah. <laughs> um, sure as, are. Yeah, <laughs> as uh, as you approach, you you see. As, as you get close, it's actually night when you land, when you arrive. And as, as you look, you, the city itself is like a glow of lights. And not flickering firelight. There is bits of flame here and there, but there is almost an, an unnatural magical light that comes from the city itself. It is beautiful. It's coming close. As you, as the ship docks, um, and you go to exit, the captain turns to all of you and says, Welcome to Wadit. Make sure you check in with the black robes before and register if you plan on staying longer than a 10 day. And as you kind of give him that look, black robes are the magistrates. Uh, they're called black robes because they're always wearing black robes. Pretty self-explanatory. Okay. It's nighttime. Most people don't arrive at night. They're going to want to question you anyway. Just give me the heads up. I'm already going to go deal with this bureaucratic crap of what just happened the other day. So I would check in there and welcome to the city, the city of Splendors. Thank you, Captain. Enjoy your stay. With that, he nods and kind of goes on his own way. And you guys disembark. Hi, Westby. Is he not in a wink? Come on, Kenneth. So, what first? Well, you had an idea of what you wanted to do whenever you got here. Mm -hmm. I think going to a knowledge repository would actually be a good idea right now. I hear the Blackstaff uh, Academy has quite the library. All right, well. Do you want to come with us? I mean, do you have plans? I have heard of Blackstone Academy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm actually going there. Oh. That's why I suggested it. All right, well, let's, let's head that way then. What do I know about the Blackstone Academy? It's the largest wizard school in the city, but the Blackstaff is, I mean, you know who the, what the Blackstaff is. It's right. the, like, council to the open lord, I would say. Um, there's always... There's always a black staff as a title. Um, the last one that you remember was Kelvin Blackstaff. Good. Um, you also know that it's not really open to the public at these hours of the night. Yep. Or I'll let her learn that lesson on her own. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, as you guys walk, um, you are actually approached by two. Um, Armored gentlemen wearing tabards of green and gold. Um, they uh, carry halberds in their hand, and you see uh, a mace, a uh, morning star strapped to their hip. Uh, they wear very uh, like decadent pointed metal hats. Um, they look like they are wearing uniforms. Um, and they kind of greet you as you enter. Uh, welcome to Waterdeep. What can we uh, do for you at this hour? Stay in the night? Stay in long? Um, for a few days, probably. All right, well, you want to check in, register with the magistrate, and they'll want to talk to you. Do we do that tonight or in the right morning? Right this way, right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they kind of lead you to the end of the docks, too. There's like a small, like almost like a office built yeah. into <laughs> the side of, of where it kind of turns off and opens up into the, the dock district itself. Uh, there's like a little window, and you see um, a mail, email. It's hard to tell. Hard to tell. Okay. Um, right. They take your name. They make note of your race. Um, without asking, you're being intrusive. Take my name, assuming I'm giving this information wrongly. There's just something. That yeah, they ask your name. I give them a false name. Okay. Okay. They take down the false name. I look to you quickly. <laughs> To say anything. Um, Ferris is my false name. Okay. 
uh, make note that you're a human, um, and asks how long you plan to stay. Well, they need an answer. Ma'am. <laughs> Sorry, um, a few you days. Then why register? I'm sorry? Then why register? You only have to register if you're staying longer than it's needed. They, the, the guards told us we needed to. Because you, they it's... brought you here. If you told them that you would stay longer than it's needed. How long I do you plan to stay? approach, excuse us, it's our first time within the city. Um, there are many things to see. Yes, well, let's stay for about 10 days then. Okay. okay. Write that down. Your name? Seisha Valspard. Seisha Valspard. Looks you over, kind of a little higher than expected. <laughs> Human. Nods. You. Then we. You see, it's spelled wrong with an I. I don't know how to happen. Okay, and then I say start time. It's L E E. My apologies. You see the, the one line get marked into an E? Uh, star time. Star time. Okay. Uh, pardon my intrusion. I believe L, but am I correct? Yes. L. Uh, the highest. Notes. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually greets you in Elvish. Oh, I will greet them back. Are they? Um, no. Oh, interesting. I, I will greet them in Elvish, but it's not the elf to elf greeting. It's the elf to someone else. Like, so. Kind of takes the hit, nods. <laughs> How long are you staying? Honestly, I have no clue. At least a 10 day. Do you want a 10 day or indefinite? Pardon me for your letter. Indefinite. I'm getting a little bit Sorry. <laughs> Anyone uh, prefer the arcane arts? I am. Uh... Oh, nice. You should think about joining the Watchful Order, Magists and Protectors, especially if you plan on staying here indefinitely. Mm. That's the Black South Captain Kirk, or a, a subsidiary of the Black South. They pull from there. Okay. I'll think about it. Is that open to the public? Yes. It is a guild. It is the public. They are kind of like the watchers and guards, with magical abilities, of course. Of course. They are used for their knowledges to investigate arcane disturbances and matters. If you are well versed already, look into joining the guild. All right. So, enjoy your stay at the City of Splinters. Of course. Water deep. I am reading what you're giving me. <laughs> I am also lightly but firmly ushering you out the door, please. Oh, yeah. Maybe you should give them your full name. Oh, of course. Um, Ferris is more of a nickname. My full name is Bill Ronto. <laughs> Crosses out Ferris. <laughs> Bill Ferris Ronto. Ferris is kind of a given name. You're right about that. It's 
wouldn't some want people, anything to get misplaced. Some people only have a single name. I did not question. Thank you for not. But we need to make sure our records are accurate, don't we? Yes, we do. Um, thank course. you for being so accurate as they look to you. Order is important. Of course. Especially when the city is so vast, so diverse. But you'll come to know. Again, enjoy your stay. Yes, thank you. I now walk out the door. <laughs> Just so you know, I call him boss. And I walk out. <laughs> I didn't, did I catch that? No, I don't think no. I did. Yep. I didn't. <laughs> At the end, good luck. Boss. <laughs> Four names I got. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> um, as you exit and make your way onto the streets of the Dock District, um, you notice that the streetlights and whatnot are broken, unrepaired. Uh, there are, though the colors, there are colors around that are burgundy and orange, um, but as you go, something actually catches your eye as you watch as two individuals go running by <laughs> and duck into an alleyway and disappear around the corner. Being chased by three other figures dressed in leather armor and whatnot and more dark garb as they continue to move and disappear down that same alley and kind of disappear out of sight. You can all give us perception checks if you like. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Woohoo! 28. 10. Okay. Uh, Vinling, you just make out the shadows. And you just see the shapes run by. Uh, Voss, while waiting, seemed to pause a little long uh, for Seisha. Mm-hmm. Figured she'd be right behind you. Uh, this catches your yeah, eye. Is, uh, you notice that uh, the first figure is a large humanoid, around seven foot tall, maybe wearing what looks to be ripped clothes. Uh, human? But really tall for a human. And the other one is wearing fine clothes, male, nothing of note. Just Jason. Higher than the, the three others, you definitely don't see. Me. Uh, one thing you notice about those is one of them wasn't like had the horns, like you saw the horns of a teeth, but that's it. Yeah. But then gone before you can even. I decide that not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you can see that the large figure is feminine, very well built, strong, and ready for a scrap. <laughs> You've all never seen a woman of this stature and size. You are a large woman. Most people greet you fact that you're such a large woman, but in uh, the kindest of sense. <laughs> this is also a well-built woman, but kind of puts you back. It's, wow, someone's taller Damn, than me. that's a big girl. Yes. Yep. Uh, the other one is a human male. <laughs> From what you can tell, you definitely see that there's an accordion on his back, and uh, they seem to be running as fast as they make their way into an alleyway. You kind of see the direction they're going. Um, I give chase. (laughs) Uh, You see where they went? You are not that fast. Okay. You you go to chase and and you go, and then stop. As soon as she gives chase, as soon as I see her sprint off, this is not probably gonna work out well. Boss will attempt to restrain her. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gonna drag uh, him down the street. Make an athletics check, and you can make an athletics or acrobatics check. Yep, 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 I put yep. my hands in my sleeves. All right. You've been rolling like crap. Maybe this will work. <laughs> Twenty-one. Nope. <laughs> yeah, you go to grab her, and she and you, she takes a couple steps, and then stops when she realizes they're out of sight, and she. Loses them down an alleyway. Well, you I think do... it was a bard. Great. <laughs> you what do. Is it? Uh, you know, I was going to say you do know that the direction they were going is headed north, and if you're in the dock ward, that's towards the castle ward. 
Uh, fantastic. I think we have uh, somewhere else to be, though. This, tell me more about this Black Staff uh, Academy. It's very you... nice. Uh, I don't actually know much about it. I'm hoping to learn more, possibly. Learn, yes. Let's all learn. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. Let's learn why you didn't give your real name. Some experiences are meant to be shared, some are not. I didn't give my real name either, and I turned and started walking. <laughs> Wait, you've been lying to me? No. But you gave him the same name you gave me. No, I did not. Voss, you also know that the uh, oh, Black Tower, mm-hmm. or the Black Staff Tower, um, is in the castle. <sighs> You know, it's been a long night. Perhaps the best thing to do would be to find a local inn and stay down for the night. You like also her. know the best one. I really want to go to that library. I don't think it's open. I bet you I can get us in. Okay. All right. Thanks, Fairboy. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Like a fair deal, this. Do I have dice or anything on me that could use like a coin <laughs> or some something I could use to flip heads or tails? You do have some coin on you. Okay. You definitely have some coin on you. You should have some dice or something. If I have a dice, um, I prefer to use a dice. We'll see why in a moment. Um, I pull out. No. Yes. No. No. Okay. I pull out a coin. I say. Heads, stay in the night. Tails, be pursued. And as he shows you heads, there's a man, a mm-hmm. bearded man, that seems to fall. On the other side, there's a dragon. You call it. I flip it. Call it in the air. Tails. Flip it. Catch it. I want to try to slide a yep, hand yep. to make it <laughs> land heads. <laughs> yep, yep. Like the back of my hand. Yep. Make, make a slide of hands. <laughs> So good. That is much better. Uh, 19. Can I make a perception to catch him? (laughs) (laughs) Nope! (laughs) It's heads. Fair play. Fine. It's like we stay in for the night. Fine. You head towards the castle ward. You head to the best inn in all of Waterdeep. The yawning portal. The yawning what? The yawning portal. Okay. That is where we will end. Session zero. Yay! Oh my gods. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you guys. And uh, next up, we'll have part two with our other two players. And as always, be excellent to each other. May you always roll with advantage. See you soon. I gotta go find you guys. (laughs) (laughs) You guys are fine.